In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to create a static website on Amazon S3. Really simple to do, and of course, this is a serverless service, so no service to manage and very, very cost effective to run a static website. Now, I'm in S3, I'm going to create a bucket for my static website, and I'm just going to call this my static website, and then I'll just add something random on the end to make this nice and unique. Now, mine's going to be in US East, and I'm going to enable uh, or I'm going to switch off the block all public access and then acknowledge. And then we'll just go all the way down and create our bucket. So I've created my bucket. It's called my static website with some random code on it. Now what I need to do is simply upload the files that we're going to use. So let's click on upload, add files. And in the code download under Amazon S3, you're going to find some files. Now we want these ones the error.html, the index.html, and the website.css. So just upload those three files to your S3 buckets. So we've got those three files. We also need permissions. So this is going to be publicly accessible because it's a website. We have turned off the block all public access, and now we need to add a bucket policy. Again, in the code download in the Amazon S3 directory, you'll find this JSON file with the code that we need. So let's copy this. This is simply going to allow any principal to perform the S3 get object API action. We need to put in the ARN, but retain the slash star because remember, when we're issuing API actions in an S3 bucket, we need to work out whether we're issuing them against the bucket or the object. This is an object level API action. So slash star actually relates to all the objects in the bucket. So I've copied all that code. And back in the policy editor here, I'm going to paste it in, then copy the bucket ARN. Then I'm going to paste that one in here where it says your bucket ARN, making sure I've still got the slash star on the end. All right, let's save those changes. So now we have the general config. What I want to do next is go to properties. We'll scroll down to the bottom and here we have static website hosting. So let's click on edit and then let's enable static website hosting. Now what we want to do is host a static website. We're not redirecting any requests. So we have to specify two things or at a minimum you need one, which is the index document, but you can also specify an error document. So let's put in index.html because that is the name of our index document. And we do have an error document. So let's put in error.html and that's all we need to do. There's no redirection rules. So we'll save the changes. Now, if I go back down to the bottom again, we now have the bucket website endpoint. So if I copy that address and note this is HTTP, okay, it's not HTTPS. So you only get unsecured static websites. If you want to enable HTTPS, then there's a couple of ways you can do that. One is to use CloudFront and to host the front end for your bucket as a CloudFront distribution. Okay, so let's test this out. So I'm going to open a new tab. I'm going to paste in my URL. And here we go. We've got our S3 static website running telling me welcome to the static website. Now, if I put in something that's incorrect, like let's put in test, instead, I get the error.html file telling me, oops, there was an error in your request. So that's how we can use the static website with both the index file and the error file. So that's it, really simple to set up, really cost effective. And as long as you don't need to do server-side processing, then a static website on S3 is a really good solution.